I, I think a good sign of what someone will do in office is what they were doing before they ever went into office. And I've spent my whole career standing up for ordinary people, uh, trying to, and in fact, we had a job center in my church, contrary to what Senator Leffler is trying to suggest. And uh, I have uh, stood up for ordinary workers time and time again. You know, during this pandemic, we call people essential workers. We ought to pay them an essential wage. And we ought to provide small business owners like her the assistance and the support that they need. Uh, Kelly Leffler is out of touch. She's thinking about people who are like her. And uh, I'm, I'm okay with the fact that she wants to make money. I just think you shouldn't use the people's seat to enrich yourself. You ought to use the people's seat to represent the people. I'd like to respond. Please do. Look, these are more lies from radical liberal Raphael Warnock, someone that has invited Fidel Castro, a murderous dictator, into his own church, someone that has celebrated anti-American, anti-Semite Jeremiah Wright. <coughs> you know, he has also said that police officers are gangsters and thugs and refused to apologize for it. He said that you can't serve God and the military. He has actually made sure that we know who he is in his own words. Those aren't my words. I'm working hard to serve Georgians. I've served thousands of Georgians, and I'm so proud to represent this state and help Georgians through this challenging time. Well, Reverend, as I understand it, you were a young man in that church in New York. Would you like to respond to the suggestion well, you, that you, in, you invited you know, him? Uh, there's a lot at stake right now uh, in the middle of this pandemic, and it's too bad that she's engaged in the politics of distraction and division. I never met him. I never invited him. He has nothing to do with me. If you want to know who informs me and my sense of how we engage uh, as people uh, in the economic system, uh, you need look no further than Matthew 25. I'm a Matthew 25 Christian. That's what I am. I, I was hungry and you fed me. I was thirsty and you gave me something to drink. I was sick and you visited me. Love your neighbor. And for me, that means you don't get rid of your neighbor's health care, particularly in the middle of a pandemic. Greg, may I respond? Go ahead. Look, I'm not going to be lectured by someone that uses the Bible to justify abortion, to attack our men and women in the military. You know, what's happening here is someone who will not own up to their own record of division. He has called on Americans to repent for their worship of whiteness. That's divisive. That's hurtful. He celebrated Jeremiah Wright, anti-Semite. He's actually called Israel an apartheid state. That is wrong for America, and I'm going to continue to make sure Georgians understand that that is him in his own words. Reverend, please respond to the abortion issue in particular. Well, l listen, I, I have a profound reverence for life <clears throat> and an abiding respect for choice. The question is, whose decision is it? And I happen to think that a patient's room is too small a place for a woman her doctor, and the U.S. government. I think that's too many people in the room. Uh, but those who are concerned about life, and I certainly am, ought to be focused on the incredibly high rates of infant mortality and maternal mortality in our country uh, when compared to other developed nations. That's something the government could work on, and I've been working on it my entire career. Hey, NBC News viewers, thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Subscribe by clicking on that button down here and click on any of the videos over here to watch the latest interviews, show highlights and digital exclusives. Thanks for watching.